So we have a fun test for you today, and I think you're gonna be shocked. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a fun one today. What I'm gonna to do today is I actually have an M1 iMac sitting right here. Now this is the base model. This is gonna be 256 gig, uh, SSD, eight gigs of RAM. And uh, this is just the M1 chip sitting in it. And the, you know, the SSD though on these are pretty fast, even at the base model. I think they're around 3000 megabytes per second. And what I'm gonna do is in a, in a real work, workflow situation, doing a video editing and actually doing the export, see how fast that export time is. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it up against a 2017 iMac. And I'll show you some pictures as I'm talking about about it sitting over there. That 2017 is a 5K 27 inch iMac. It's basically the base model though, and let me give you some specs on it. It's 3.4 gigahertz, it's an i5 with a one terabyte SSD. Now I boot off an external SSD drive, and the SSD drive, I'm actually going through a cable, and it's a Samsung QVO SSD sitting there. It's only 500 megabytes per second between that connection. That's where the OS sits. That's a big caveat there as well. Now, the other big thing over there is that 27 inch has 48 gigs of RAM, right? This over here, this M1 sitting right here only has eight, but this chip is way faster, all right? So these are some big differences, but I'm gonna test them against the workflow and then tell you the cost of both systems. And we're gonna kind of see what actually wins in this testing. Now, before you, you know, come back at me and say, oh, this is not a fair test, 48 gigs of RAM versus eight, yeah, I don't know if it's fair. This is a way faster CPU than the M1 here. That's a way slower CPU over there as far as benchmarks. I don't want to test benchmarks. I just want to test my real workflow on this. I'm going to test exactly what I do on a normal basis, if I should use the M1 or if I'm wasting my time because I still do almost all my video editing over there on that 2017 system, which I love, that huge 5K screen. And this, and obviously this is not your workflow, it's my workflow. There's gonna be a million tests factors here, what I'm using, what I'm doing. This all, you know, obviously it's all gonna change, but I'm just gonna show you one example and then you can take from, you know, whatever you want from it. Now, if you wanna skip ahead and just see the test, you can go, I'm gonna go ahead and put some time up here or up here. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but I'll put the time up there you can skip to. But you gotta see the setup of this in order to understand what this test is all about. So I recommend you going through the whole video here and watching the next part and then getting into the test later. All right, now the reason I wanted to do this test also is because of the cost difference, all right? So while that's an older system with 48 gigs of RAM sitting over there, um, this system's actually more sitting right here. So right now you can get this on Apple refurbished. You can see it here for 1049, about a thousand bucks, 1050 plus tax and stuff. So, you, you know, obviously the M1s are a little bit cheaper. You can find them used and stuff. I understand that it might be a little bit cheaper than this. But the 27 inch over there, the 27 inch iMac base model, right now you can get on OWC for 529 bucks, all right? Now that's, not, that's gonna be before you add the SSD that I did and also the RAM. But here's one for 529. Obviously it's the exact base model, 3.4 gigahertz. So you can pick these up very inexpensive, all right? And it does have, obviously, both of our systems have this, let me just see here and here, where is it? It's a four gigabyte Radon Pro, uh, what is it, 570 GPU. So it's got a GPU in there as well. Now, obviously though, I wanted to show, like here we go, OW, so you can buy memory really cheap. Here's 32, 32 gigabytes for uh, $69.99. So overall, and all in on that system over there, the, the iMac, it's about 750 bucks or so, even with the SSD and everything else. So even, even with all this set, even with all that RAM on that system over there, it's still way cheaper than this. This is about a thousand bucks, that other system, seven so people always ask me, what should I buy? And the bottom line is you should really, you know, I, I always get comments like no one should buy an Intel iMac. And I understand that. I mean, the, it's the OS updates that are a problem. But at the end of the day, we're going to find out if this thing can really hold a flame to this right here. It's just going to be an interesting test. Now we got to just go through some of the specs really quickly. And I watched, I watched a video recently with Mark Ellis. He does a lot of YouTube videos, especially on Macs. And he ran into a very particular situation. Watch his video. He's a great channel. And I'm kind of, that's why I kind of wanted to do this test because I have a different workflow here than his, completely different, but it's still going to be a test that you can get some data off of. All right, so a couple things here. This is actually running Sonoma, and my 27-inch over there can only run Ventura. They're both up to the newest versions of those operating systems. That's one difference right there. All right, so the footage that I'm going to be using to export out of this, and we'll get into this in a second, I'm going to be using CapCut for the actual program I'm going to be using here to video edit on, and we'll get into that in a second. But basically, it's a Sony uh, ZV-E10. I'm going to be doing 4K footage in H.264 for all it's worth there. I'm going to move it directly into CapCut, and then also no proxies at all, and then I basically edit on it, and then I will export the video after that, and we're going to measure those export times. 
All right, if you look at my screen really quickly, you'll notice in here, here's the edit, and it's exactly the same on both systems, all right? You can see it in here. So it's gonna have you know, a couple layers of 4K in here, a couple trans, a lot of transitions, a whole bunch of text in here as well, um, various things you can actually see in here, but it's gonna be text and transitions basically. Very, very easy, um, you know, it's not gonna be super, a huge workload, but it's my real workload. I mean, obviously this is a real world video that I created, and it's something that I would put out. So it's gonna be real world there. All 4K footage, it's got some sound files in it, stuff like that but nothing mind-bending. It does have a color correction in it as well, um, and things like that. So I'm definitely doing color correction this as well. So we'll see how fast this is on both systems. But this is CapCut, and, and definitely if you've never checked out CapCut, I'm not affiliated with them, but it's one of the best free editors for your Mac. Incredible, just get CapCut for desktop. It's really powerful, and, and so that I wanted to, this is how I, this is what I use. Obviously it's gonna be different on Final Cut Pro or iMovie and stuff like that, but I use this, so this is what the test is gonna be in. And also to note something, the scrubbing on this, both on the 2017 iMac and this M1 sitting right here, they're both super smooth. Um, the playback is super smooth. You can see here, let me go ahead and just play this for a second. Anyways, you get the idea. I don't want to waste your time, but we'll get into the test here in a second. Overall, though, all the stuff in here is smooth. It's a pleasure to use. I'm not running into any issues. If I go full screen on the actual image here in the middle, sometimes it does stutter, but it stutters on both machines. I think it has something to do with my workload and, and the way I actually, I, I attach files and I, and I take the sound and I attach it to the video. I think it has something to do with CapCut, but overall, it's just a great experience and they're both equally the same when I'm actually using the editor. All right, so now that the edit's complete, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the time of the export of this, all right? And I'm gonna be exporting this in 4K, H.264, the MP4 format, that's just what I use. 24 frames per second is what I use as well, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. A bit rate of 24,000, now that's a custom bit rate, but it's the same on both systems. It's probably pretty low, but anyways, you get the idea. This is what I do, this is how my videos look, so this is what I'm sticking with. And then basically, let me just see here, um, you know, again, I tell you, there's no proxies involved and stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and export this out and see exactly what system wins here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Now, the actual video length is eight minutes and 15 seconds. So it's eight minutes and 15 seconds as far as the length of that, and we're gonna export it right now. On the M1, drum roll please, on the M1 system right here with the base model, it took eight minutes and 58 seconds to export that video. So eight minutes and 58 seconds, just slightly longer than the video's time. And again, the video's time was eight minutes and 15 seconds, but it took eight minutes and 58 seconds to, to export that, not render it, export that out. Again, I didn't render pre-render, I didn't do any proxies, just keep that in mind, all right? So that's where I had the first baseline and that is done. Now I ran this multiple times and I'm taking an average here so I know it's accurate. All right, now we're gonna do the 2017 27 inch over there. This is the exciting part. Let's see what this does. Okay, I'm a little confused here. I looked at it and it took seven minutes and seven seconds, all right, to export the eight minute and 15 second video. So seven minutes and seven seconds for the older 2017 versus eight minutes and 58 seconds for the M1 sitting right here. I know there's a huge difference in RAM, but it has me scratching my head for sure. So it appears that the older system here, the Intel iMac with the more RAM obviously, and the dedicated graphics, you gotta remember that, is about 26% faster than the M1 on a specific workload. Again, this could be different totally for everybody else. If you use Final Cut Pro, it could be better optimized. If you use something else, obviously it's gonna be different. I know this thing's snappier and a lot of stuff, but with this specific edit, I had no idea going into this, this is what I got. It's 26% faster for me to still edit on my old machine than this M1 sitting here with the downgraded RAM, and it does make me wonder why. Now, a couple things to note, obviously. That iMac, the 2017 over there, it was, it was about 1,900 bucks new, and then I added the RAM. That would have cost about 2,400 bucks new, and that was a long time ago, but you can get it for 750 now. This system over here was about 1299 new, and I can get it for about 1,050 now. So it, the other system over there used to be quite a bit more expensive than this one. That's something you gotta think about here, obviously, because this thing is still very powerful, and it's, it's limited by the base model, but it's still, it's holding its own against the 48 gigabyte you know, RAM over there on the 2017. So it's true, I mean, Mark Ellis had that video that came out, and this is what kind of prompted me to do this video. Again, check his channel out, it's a great channel. But he saw similar results, like 
and I'm seeing them here. Now again, I know that there's a huge difference in RAM and all that kind of stuff and dedicated graphics and stuff, but I'm talking just the cost alone. You tell me what you think is causing this. I mean, why would it be so much faster, 26% faster on an older machine? I know, you know, that's kind of what I'm here to figure out. I also know that if I do this test on 100 other things, it might be completely different. I mean, depending on what I'm testing. Again, different programs are gonna get different results. Even your workflow, how I exported it, all that kind of stuff, using proxies, it may all make a huge difference. I know that when Mark Ellis did, he did a, a render first and then the export, he kind of pre-rendered. The render was faster on the M1s, but the export was still faster, I think, on the older systems. I'm just doing no rendering, I'm just doing a full export, doing it all at once, and I got a faster system over there on the 2017, which is pretty, mind, you know, to me, it's eye-opening. You know, I recently made a video, you can check out my older videos on how confusing all this is, the ecosystem at Apple. There's the M1s, the M2s, the M3s. We're seeing faster times on the M1s and the M2s sometimes, and the M1s and the M3s, and sometimes the M3s kills the M1s. Check out that video. But at the end of the day, this is a perfect example of why you don't trust benchmarks. Benchmarks are one thing, and they're usually accurate for a very specific test, but you always wanna test your real world tests, right? So if you do pick up a new Mac, test it with your old system, see exactly what you did, test them head to head, and determine if you wanna actually spend that extra money. In this case, I'm a channel where I buy a lot of stuff because of my channel, but in, in the real world, I mean, this would have not have been a good investment for me uh, for various reasons, as you can see. Also, I may have to do more tests on a bunch of other stuff just to make this more fair. I know that thing has more RAM. You guys can post in the comments what kind of tests you want to see, what applications you want to see. I might get around to it, I might not. It depends on my workload. But I'm interested myself. I mean, everyone keeps telling me, people, I get so many haters saying, you should never, you know, Intel sucks, you know, all this other stuff. But here's a real world test. I know it's perfect because I did everything the same. I had no external applications running. I made sure, you know, the OS is a, you know, that's a difference and things like that, obviously. The RAM's a difference things. But overall, I made sure no applications are running in the background. I made sure they were, you know, CapCut was updated to the newest versions, all that kind of stuff. And I had exactly the same timeline and I did a multiple uh, time, you know, I did, I did multiple tests. I averaged them out and it's still 26% faster. So I have no idea why this is. You tell me, but I think other tests will help. Post in the comments what tests you want to see and I'll see if I can do some. Anyways, take it with a grain of salt. It's shocking to me. I didn't expect this result. And we'll see you in the next one in a couple days here. Let me know if you guys like these kind of videos. Subscribe if you can. I'm a single person. I do the video filming. I do the editing. I do everything myself. And I have a job. So I have a lot of time I invest into this. And I want people to view this. So post things on comments, boards, and stuff. Try to get me some views. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.